Welcome back you beautiful people. Now I can't stop you from crashing. It's pretty much inevitable when you go off road. Oh! Now we get sent so many misfortunes, aka fails and bails, OTBs and all of the above. Take a look at this. But what I can do is give you a few pointers on how to start to crash less. Number one, jumping. God, Jono. Oh my, down here. I love jumping, no matter how big or how small. And for some of us, we'd love to learn to get some air. But the majority, pretty much getting a little bit of air is super intimidating. Like crashing on jumps is never fun. I have, I've been there, I've crashed so much on jumps, but I learned from my mistakes. But there are two main reasons for crashing off jumps. Number one, getting bucked. Yes, getting bucked. This is probably the most common one when it comes to jumping failures. Now, most of us would getting up and getting forward too early on the takeoff is gonna send our body weight over the front trying to get into the air, and that's never good. That's just gonna send you over the bar, spit you that way, because you're just trying to get in the air. You're gonna get in the air, but you're gonna get in the air for the wrong reasons, and it's gonna end badly. Another reason for getting bucked is if you're riding a full suspension bike, your rebound or your suspension on the rear is set too fast. So when you compress that suspension, it's basically gonna let loose when you get bit weight on the bike, it's gonna go bing and it's gonna pop you over the bars as well. And the other reason is landing sideways on a jump. Now this all happens right at the beginning, right at the takeoff. When you start to pull on the bars, just thinking by pulling, you're gonna get up into the air and get some air. Now when it comes to pulling on the bars, you're probably gonna favor one side and then the other. It means you're gonna be pulling more on one side, which is gonna cause the bike to go sideways off the lip. And when you're in the air, it's just gonna get worse. And landing sideways, well, it's not gonna be nice for your bike, your pivot points, your wheels, your rims, anything. It's gonna be horrible. Right, the correct technique is that manual to bunny hop technique. Now Neil's done a great video on how to do jumping. Now, but when it comes to the lip, you don't just want to be pulling on the bars because by using the pull on the bars and your clipless pedals on your pedals to bring it all up and moving your body weight, it's, it's just going to end wrong. So go back to basics, learn the fundamental skills to jump and you can start to jump a little bit better without crashing. But how? There wouldn't be any fun without crashing. Yeah. <laughs> you right? Ah, roots, the trees, veins that feather out into the wilderness, into the trails, just to catch us mountain bikers out. These things are slippery suckers when it comes to a rainy winter's day. Now, it's a love-hate relationship with me. I love it when it's dry, but when it's wet, I hate it. Some of us, it's like Marmite. Some of us hate it, some of us love it. I love Marmite, but I don't like wet roots. Now, take a look at Neil. Yeah, that little slimy, slithering root of there caught Neil out, took his front wheel, and he hit the deck. Now that's the most common way when it comes to crashing on routes. It's all about looking ahead, focusing, scanning, looking at your professional peripheral, there you go, in your peripheral vision and just make sure you can see what's coming and wait for the unexpected. Body needs to be weight over the rear wheel. You wanna be in the tack position and just let your bike dance around underneath you when it comes to routes. I'm gonna show you how not to do it, which is gonna be terrible and terrifying and then I'm gonna show you how to do it. Oh. Summer. Ah. Oh. I'll do that again the right way. <laughs> right, roots are intimidating, so it's about going slow, it's not a race. Looking ahead, look for the sniper roots like that one, and look ahead. Done. OTB over the bars, probably the most unsavable crash ever. It's like the point of no return. Take a look at these. Okay, there's a number of reasons that can cause this going over the bars, but the one we're going to look at is going off drop-offs. If 
first things first is to drop that saddle, lower it. I've got a dropper post, I'm gonna lower that down. But if you haven't got a dropper, I recommend you stop, quick release, lower it down or an Allen key just to lower that saddle down because it's gonna be a little bit safer because the higher it is, the more chance it's gonna hit you in the bum and push your weight forward off the drop, which is gonna send you over the bars. Okay, one of the common reasons for going over the bars off a drop off is when you just let the front end dive down. If I was to roll this, take a look at it. My body weight is gonna suddenly shift forward, pushing all my weight onto that front wheel and spit me over the bars. Plus, some drops you probably can't roll because you're gonna sump out and that's gonna cause you to stop, jerk and throw your weight over the front. Now, the technique you need to adopt when it comes to drop-offs is that manual technique. You wanna get that front wheel up. You wanna remove your body weight from that front wheel and bring it over the back. Now, this depends on how fast or how slow you're coming into a drop. The slower you come into a drop, the more you want to adopt that manual position so you can get your wheels to glide off instead of drop down and throw you over. Now, that when you're going faster, you just have to shift your body weight a little bit, lift up the front wheel, get your weight off of it because the momentum of you going off the drop is gonna keep you level and then you land. Other things that are important are to come off the brakes and stop pedaling before coming into the drop. Concentrate on the technique that you need to adapt for the drop. For instance, the manual. Keep your head up, look ahead at your run out and don't do anything with your brakes or pedals in the air. The most common cause for crashing in corners, well that's, that's poetry right there, is when you lose the front wheel. You find yourself going down the trail, head first, hands out, and scraping your knees. Hello. How's it going? Frank Walker from National <laughs> Tolls. Now the common cause could be due to weight distribution on the bike, which I'll touch on in a minute. But it could also be because of the oh. terrain, the corner oh. could be really loose. It could be some marbly, pebbly bits in there that's just gonna catch your wheels up, spit your grip off, and you're gonna go and crash. Oh, oh! Now to correct this, you gotta adjust your body weight. Okay, so there's two corners here. Neil crashed in the corner over there. You all right? How's it? Straight to my face. Why? It's the first time I've done that in a while. And that's when his front wheel slipped out because he didn't even realize what was going on. But that was due to the terrain. Maybe there was too, too much weight over the rear and not enough on the front to keep the grip on. But I don't want to judge Neil. He's a great rider. But when it comes to a corner like this, you want to be scanning ahead. You want to look ahead, see your turn, maybe slow down a little bit more if you're thinking that you're going to slide. Maybe predict that you are going to slide so you can move your body weight and your position on the bike to counteract where that bike's going to go. Okay, one of the great things that I kind of do when I get caught out and my front wheel's going, I just drop a leg, my inside leg, so it stops me from dropping the whole bike to the floor and I can save myself by giving myself a little dab. Another reason is dragging oh. your front brake a little oh. too much. Definitely coming off the front brake when you're in the turn is key. Yeah. Other crashes could be going offline. This could oh. be because you oh. misjudged the speed oh. into the turn and you're drifting wide. Oh. Oh. I want to be a little bit offline. I've got to look ahead. Look ahead, Blake. Brake before. Slow in, fast out. Okay. It's all about looking ahead. Body position, get ready for the unexpected, look at your exit, and carry on. Yeah. So there you go, a few tips on how to start crashing less. I'm not gonna, you're probably gonna crash again. Oh my God. You are probably gonna crash again, but hopefully these tips are gonna help hone in those skills, maybe lock them down before sending it over an obstacle that you've been stuck on for weeks, days, months, years, or you're just gonna try and tackle a new, new obstacle. So just learn those skills first, remember? And the main thing is just to scan ahead. Enjoy the trail and uh, just stay safe because <sighs> crashing is gonna happen no matter what. I still crash. I crashed in this video just for you. Actually, I just crashed over there as well. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed it. And if it did help, let us know in the comments down below. See ya. Liam, do you want lunch? Do you want lunch? Yeah. I've got mango. You, want, you like mango? Oh, I love mango, dude. 
Mango chutney.